All right, I'll bring the meeting to order. Please stand for Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will be led in prayer tonight by Reverend Michael Long, of the pastor of the Grovestone Baptist Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you that you provide for our needs daily. Thank you that you, you allowed us to be born in a place, in a country, that we have freedoms. We have freedom to worship. We have freedom to assemble. We have freedom to meet and express our opinions and views about where the communities where we live. Father, thank you for that freedom. Lord, we are commanded to pray for our leaders. That's what I do right now. I pray for the leadership. Pray for their wisdom, that you would give them wisdom and guidance and direction in the decisions that they make for the community of Black Men. Father, I also pray for our uh, police officers and firemen who serve and protect our community. Lord, we thank you for their service. And Lord, we, thank, we say thank you. And we say thank you for most of all, that you sent your one and only Son to die on the cross for our sins. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. The, the one there where it says proclamation of town or the ah, deficiency saving a twig off the tree okay uh, we have two proclamations here the first one for uh, veterans day which would be tuesday november the 11th whereas on veterans day our nation comes together to honor our veterans and commemorate the legacy of profound service and sacrifice <laughs> they've upheld in the pursuit of a more perfect union and whereas through their steadfast defense of America's ideals, our service members have ensured our country still stands strong, our founding principles still shine, and nations around the world know the blessings of freedom. Whereas the selflessness of our service members is unmatched, and they remind us that there are few things that are more fundamentally American than doing our utmost to make a difference in the lives of others. Whereas just as our veterans stood watch on freedom's frontier, so have they safeguarded the prosperity of our nation, nation in our neighborhoods, our businesses, and our homes. And whereas, now as teachers, engineers, doctors, parents, as well as local government employees, these patriots have made contributions to civilian life that serves as testament to their dedication to the welfare of our country. Now, therefore, I see Michael Sobel, mayor of the town of Black Mountain, do hereby proclaim that all citizens observe Veterans Day, November the 11th, by participating with patriotic ceremonies in honor of those who serve to preserve the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy. The second proclamation is uh, for Saturday, November 15th, Arbor Day for the town of Black Mountain. Whereas in 1872, Jay Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Ag Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. Whereas trees in Black Mountain, the town of Black Mountain, increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of our businesses, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, when, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Therefore, it would be a result that I see Michael Sobel and the Board of Aldermen of the Town of Black Mountain hereby proclaim Saturday, November 15th, I mean, November 15th, 2014, as Arbor Day. Uh, we have a couple folks that have signed up for citizen comments. So if you want to 
Uh, Andrew Wagner, first. Come right up to the podium there. Give him a dress also. Hello, everyone. Hello. You're Andrew Wagner at? I am a I'm Andrew Wagner. And your address? At 18 Beach Street. Beach Street. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, several of us, including myself, uh, serve on the Urban Forestry Council here in town. And I uh, thank you for proclaiming uh, November 15th, Arbor Day. We're looking forward to having that be the uh, a recurring event um, here in Black Mountain. And our plan for the day is to have um, an event behind Bilo uh, in the Greenway at the dog park. And the plan is for the Blue Ridge Arborist Association, which is a group of arborists from the surrounding area of Buncombe County, uh, to get together at 8 a.m. and put together four or five groups where we're going to be going through and doing the routine maintenance on those young trees that are in that park. And as part of the routine maintenance that morning, uh, we're going to be also facilitating uh, coaching sessions on proper pruning and our cultural practices in regards to tree care. Um, that will go on from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then from 11 to 12 p.m., we will be planting three trees and initiating the Arbor Day celebration. Um, we would love it if um, any of you all would come and represent the town for that. I believe it's a requirement that we do have town representatives uh, there during the proclamation. Um, so we would greatly appreciate that. And then so from 11 to 12, we will have the Arbor Day proclamation again and the tree planting of two bald cypress and a swamp white oak that will be planted in an area that is proposed to be a continuation of the greenway between the primary schools and the Flat Creek Greenway and that dog park in the future at some point. Um, so I, we still need to meet with someone on the greenways and the planning community here to make sure that we plant them in an appropriate location for that, uh, which we are going to do. Um, and then after 12, we do an arboricultural demonstration where we're going to do aerial climbing and pruning of several trees in that dog park for safety and proper maintenance. So we are hoping to make it a really great event that we can continue doing every year. Somewhere around town, I'm sure there's always going to be a place that we can do some volunteer work and plant a few trees. Um, and it should, it should be a great time. Good, good, thank you. Let me ask you one question. You may not have the answer, answer to this, but just speaking of, of uh, trees. Uh, the Willie Adelgid and with the uh, hemlock, where, where do we stand on that? I mean, as a community, as, a, as the western part of the state, I mean, is this, is it on the decline? Uh, is it just taking a sabbatical for a while? I, I haven't noticed as many. I would say that it's on the decline. Um, basically, it's an aphid pest, and so the trees are prone to the pest if they haven't been treated. And the goal now, since the, since the aphid, the Woolly Delta has been able to move through the area and pretty much kill most of the trees that have not been treated, or at least greatly reduce the health of the trees that have not been treated. So that now the priority is maintaining a low pest population, not so much an elimination of the pests, because that's going to be really difficult. Um, but it has moved through. It's still in the area. If you don't treat your trees, it's, they're likely to get the woolly adelgid again. But we don't have the high population of woolly adelgid because there's not a lot of trees that have not been treated yet. So cool. that, that makes sense. Um, I, I feel like there's a lower priority to treat them now, but it still requires some diligence to ensure that your trees don't get overrun with them again. I know that in the past, uh, maybe four or five years ago, the board voted to go ahead and, and pay to get certain trees around town inoculated, uh, which saved the town 
thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars, because if those trees had died where they were in the rights of way, they were up the end of the power lines, and it would have cost, cost us a lot of money. So if you and your organization, if you see that there needs to be others treated, please let us know, because it's certainly worth the prevention. The prevention is much cheaper than trying to uh, eradicate a dead tree. Exactly. I mean, they do require a closer look than just a pass-by notice. Um, but and, and I imagine that there's certain record keeping as to when those trees were treated. Now, the treatments only last for three, maybe five years. Okay. And so if it's been five years since they were treated, it may be something that needs to look into as far as retreatment. Uh, retreatment's a lot cheaper now than it was because a lot of the patents have run out on the chemicals that you use. All right, I'm glad you mentioned this. I'll, I'll, I'll check with Matt on yeah. that. So. Thanks again. We look forward to seeing you there on the on the fifteenth. Thank you. Uh, secondly, we have Don Trutwin. Trutwin. It's Trutwin. Trutwin. Say it just like it's spelled. Thank you. Thanks. I was a chemistry major. Excuse me. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Board of Aldermen, and um, committee members and also members of the community. My name is Dawn Trutwin. I reside at 111 3rd Street, Black Mountain. And um, today I wanted to address, you have taken recent action on um, the Town Square project and the town has taken back the responsibility for that property and that project um, as of July 1st of this year. and. Uh, I do know that um, after many inquiries, I know I only have three minutes, after many inquiries and almost two and a half years from different people, um, the Town Square Steering Committee has had requests to turn over their information for um, the amount of money that they raised for the project and the amount of money they spent and what it was spent on. Uh, you, as a Board of Aldermen on March 10th of 2014, adopted and passed a motion that stated that this committee needs to turn over to you all of the records from the inception of this project to the end of the project so that um, you yourself would be able to digest and, and release that information, which is public information. Every time, I've been doing this for, I don't know, about two years, um, I spoke to you at the um, budget meeting in 2013 about who was overseeing this project as far as the Board of Aldermen, how are you getting inform your information, did you have any information? I was told at that time that from the um, Parks and Greenway, um, and I want to get this name right, that the Parks and Greenway um, Inc., Black Mountain Parks and Greenway Inc., was a private 501c3. There is no such thing as a private 501c3. Those records are public information. I here, have here documentation. I have the acceptance letter dated August 7, 2010, regarding that committee that um, gives them tax-exempt status so that nobody has to pay any tax dollars on the money that's raised and when it's used. The, the status of this um, organization is it's a public charity status. And that was issued in 2010. What this means is that a public charity status means that they get their funds from multiple individuals, companies, as opposed to a private foundation, which gets all their funds from usually one big don donor, and then those, that money is dispersed um, through grants. Um, and so that's the IRS filing. I have a copy of the 990 um, filing from this um, organization. Uh, the last one was filed and um, recorded in 2012. And the status, again, is an organization that normally receives more than 33% of its support from contributions, memberships, fundraising, such, which makes the funds that have gone to fund this committee, this activity, this project, is public information. 
I have here a copy of the IRS definition of a 501c3 organization. Don, we, we will go ahead and look into this for you. Okay, let as me finish for the rest. Uh, let me just finish this. Just that According one thing. According to the IRS this. disclosure, exempt organizations must make its most three most recently filed 990s and all related supporting documents available for public inspection. And I would like to say that there were a lot of volunteers, a lot of people who contributed to the success of this project. Now, the roadblock has not come from the people who worked hard, who put their time, effort, and money into making this project a reality. The roadblock has come from the head and the committee members who say, every time you go to them for the two last two and a half years and what they've said to you is, uh-uh, that information is not public and that's not true. The other thing is, um, on the um, June 9th, 2014 tape meeting, um, Mr. Sneed explained that it is illegal for the Board of Aldermen to form a committee, a foundation, an organization that has the right to outvote them. This, organi this foundation, Inc., has outvoted you and denied you the information that you have requested. And we also got a printout of the financial that after two and a half years, two boxes of information were brought to Mr. Dean Luby, who volunteered to take a look at this and try to get you guys the information you requested, that you made a motion on and voted unanimously on to receive. He got that information about seven months ago, and this report was released Friday as far as the totals that this committee has raised and you give me just one minute I'll find it and then I'll we, be done we, we've gone ahead and listened and we appreciate what you're what you've done we will get with Dean Ludy we'll I'll get with Matt and we will be in touch with you thank you Don okay one more thing uh, I did uh, find please it. please we okay I will bring this up under old business thank you very much I can finish thanks Okay, we'll make sure that we look into this, and please, I will, I will, I will come by and we'll sit down, the three of us, and get see what we've got on this. I, not sure. Okay, um, we got a consent agenda now, Matt. No, you've got uh, communication from boards and commissions. So first, you've got uh, Jamie Matthews, Public Services Director's semi-annual report. Evening, Mayor and Board. This is our public services uh, March through August 2014 biannual report. Um, starting out with uh, work orders completed, uh, streets and parks completed 1,422, water was completed at 1,502, with 536 line locates, uh, 498 water cutoff and connections. We had 88 for sanitation with our work order totals at uh, right at 3,000, 2,919 work orders. Um, our water system, on our usage, we used 128,132,000 gallons, 696,000 gallons a day. Our water loss was 38.5% at uh, 267,000 gallons a day. And um, a lot, that's up from what it normally is, but uh, a lot of that is from uh, a lot of the taps that we changed in town, uh, a lot more leaks that we've had, and uh, we also had some watering for different purposes throughout the town, so that's up just a little bit from what it normally is. On our water system projects, our uh, Carolina Heights water pressure assessment, it's going really well. Um, I know Jesse with Civil Design Concepts and Mark White's done a really good job with this. Uh, we was at 35 PSI, uh, we've upped the pressure two times and we've seen a, a 30 PSI increase. So that's working really good. We're going to try to flow some hydrants within the next week and if it meets our fire flow, uh, then this, this should be complete within the next four to six weeks total. But uh, we're definitely seeing an increase. So that has worked out really good. On our GIS GPS mapping, um, we're at 2,500, a little over 2,500 meters done. Um, We've, we've got 3,400 in total. 
so we've had to pull off of this and on this just for different jobs and, and being a little low on manpower, but uh, we've been talking to Josh and we've been working on some new stuff uh, about getting uh, a, good, a better system, and so we're working on that and that's, that's going to work out good too in the future. Um, water taps, we replaced uh, water taps through town, approximately 30 of them, and uh, the department was really pleased with this project. Uh, and we saved approximately $115,000 for taxpayers by doing this project. And about every one of these taps were leaking. Some of them we counted as high as 13 leaks on one tap. And just the only reason they didn't show is because they were encased under concrete. And a lot of, a lot of the lines was encased in a two inch galvanized line. So, uh, and it was going into storm drains and sewer and, and such. So. These are, these are replaced, should last us another 30 to 40 years, we hope. Um, that being said, it's still on contract for DOT to pave uh, through Black Mountain. They're actually starting to mobilize any day now to do our milling, so keep your fingers crossed, and we're really looking forward to that, and I know the citizens are too. And I'd just like to thank you for your patience on that, because I know there's been a lot of people involved, and it's been a big project, so we look forward to getting it done before winter. We've added something new. We've got an old tow road pump station, which has sort of been in the making, but we've signed a PO to get this started. It's something that needs to be done. We need to up our pump system. They're just too small, and they're overworked right now, so we're looking at uh, budgeting the money to get a new pump station put in on the toll road, which will bring, our state, bring it up to state code and make it legal. So we look forward to getting that done. Uh, on Locust Street, we installed a 180-foot or 2-inch water line uh, that... Uh, Mark just let me know that it passed all of its tests and stuff, so we'll be hooking it up, and uh, that'll be a good circulating line for that area. We'll be able to carry a lot more houses in that area for the local street subdivision. So that's another project that uh, is just on the verge of being complete. On our infrastructure projects and activities, we had several tree removals. A lot of this stuff is just our normal uh, spring and summertime stuff. We've done massive amounts of stormwater dish. Uh, ditching and coal replacement this year, uh, storm drain replacements. We put out 90 tons of asphalt this year and we're not even done so we're going to try to, we may have half that much more to go before uh, the cold weather sets in. Uh, we've done about every municipal parking lot as far as street striping and, and some street striping in itself. Uh, we've done a lot of street sign replacement and repair this year, uh, normal routine maintenance. Park maintenance, a lot of it was routine. Um, we built several fences and we actually refurbished the whole swing set area at uh, Lake Tomahawk and bring it up to code and what it needed to be and it turned out really nice. Uh, we built a new split rail fence to community garden uh, and made it look a lot nicer and plus it, I know we had several larcenies and, and hopefully that'll deter that. Uh, we had our mowing weed eating. Uh, we refurbished the restrooms at Lake Tomahawk, redone them. Uh, we built fences for the elementary school, we mulched parks and playgrounds, we've done our pool maintenance for the year, past inspections, and of course we're still doing the ball fields, and uh, we've done some more drainage at Lake Tomahawk, and I'd like to thank uh, Diana McCall for that, she was a big help with that, and a lot of her ideas on that backside really, really turned out good, so uh, we appreciate her help with that. And of course we've done some parking lot striping in them areas. On administrative projects, Montreat Road sidewalk phase two, uh, going up to E Street. You should see JLS mobilizing any day. They should have done been here, weather permitting. Um, they should be here by the end of the week or first of next week. We'll get phase two of the sidewalk going. Um, on our street paving, we got several streets paved or patched this year. Uh, West Chapel, Hillcrest, Heron, Campbell, Bethel, Sutton Avenue, Donna Drive, and parts of Goldmont. So that turned out really good and Lonesome Mount Paving won the contract for that this year and as always they done us a good job also. Sidewalk replacement and repair, Candler Concrete, they're still working on that. They're supposed to come back and replace the patches where we done the taps. Um, that could be any day now. Uh, they do a good job for us. On our Lake Tomahawk dredging, we have got started on the permit process for that. Uh, with civil design concepts, uh, we're going ahead and get the ball rolling on that. That's a lengthy process, and maybe when uh, the time comes around to dredge the lake, we'll have the permits in place, and we can just get to going with that. 
Two Dams Emergency Action Plan, that was completed. The Army Corps Engineers uh, should be taking down those 54 trees in the process of getting quotes. I'm waiting on one more as we speak. Um, try to do that in January after all the events and after Christmas and everything has slowed down. We had our bridge inspections this year. All the bridges turned out good. We do got some maintenance to do. I've got that scheduled for this month uh, as far as uh, some fixing some rusty spots, some welding gusset plates. Uh, Duncan's Welding's gonna take care of that for us and uh, JLS is gonna do some hot pouring for cracks and sealers to keep the salt and sand out come this winter. So we'll get that going any day. I, and I added a slide uh, just because it is maintenance and uh, me and Dean worked a lot on this and Dean done a really good job and we tried to help him out so and we really tried to help the golf course out and get them back on their feet so we we helped them do a bunch of work up there and built them some storage bins for the material uh, we repaired a dump truck that they desperately needed and put new clutch pressure plate windshields just whatever it needed to get it back legal and going Hauled off pile, 12 piles of brush. We replaced culverts under the cart path. We've done some asphalt patching on the cart path. And uh, Sean Bill's done a really good job at the maintenance uh, shop. He actually took 10 existing lights, took them down, installed five new high efficiency lights. We'll save on the power bill, and plus you don't got as many lights burning and you got more light. So that turned out really good. Um, we got it fixed for their health inspections by doing some stuff up there in the 19th hole. We restriped their parking lots, installed new door closers, new electrical outlets, and we actually refurbished the bridge uh, off of North Fork Road that was in some need of some major repair as far as golf carts. It was a safety issue, so we, we repaired the bridge and, and got it going. Um, before I end, I would, ju I would just like to, to say that I appreciate some other departments too that helped us uh, the police department helped with some major traffic control. Chief, I appreciate you and your guys for that as far as these taps through town. Um, fire chief, I appreciate your guys for helping us. They've been helping us blow out some culverts here lately, and we've got several of them done in the past month, and that's a big money saver. And it's worked out really good. And uh, before I end, I, I always talk about what a, a good job that the guys do, and, and they do. And... Uh, I'm not cutting them short, but I always forget sometimes that there's other people work for me too. And just so happens she's here tonight. And I was going to say this anyway, but uh, I would like to thank Laurel Mayberry. She's a, she's a very good employee, and she does an awesome job. And since she took that job, she's been very dedicated. And she's a considerable asset to this department and this town. And uh, I'd just like to make that known. So... If you got any questions, I'd be glad to ask you. The only question I have is when's DOT going to be paving through the center of town? I actually called them this morning, and uh, he was in a meeting and was supposed to return my call. I never got it, but I know he called Friday also, and they are supposed to be milling any time, so they should be mobilizing any day. And I think that's the same feedback you got also, yeah, wouldn't it, Matt? They called on, uh, like, like Jamie had said, on Friday, and we talked to the the um, division director that, uh, that, that was getting his kind of getting his information ready so that he could uh, begin milling and, uh, and still start paying for the season ones. Yeah. And uh, I, I know a lot of their questions was is how deep the patches was that we patched because they're milling one and a half inch, but ours is two inches or better, so we shouldn't have any problems there. And uh, and before I end, I, if I could answer a question for you, Mayor, about the tree inoculation. That was, I got records of that, and we actually done that three years ago, and it was talked about this year actually getting started coming this coming fall to start again and go around because we marked the trees and stuff. So it is on our, it is on our radar to get that done. Great, great. Thanks, James. Mm -hmm. Next report will be from the Black Mountain Greenway. Julie. Okay, we're going to talk about 2L for the last year in the Black Mountain Greenway Commission. And so first we're going to go over some events we did. About a year ago, we had set up our display at the Black Mountain Farmers Market. And as we always do, we got a lot of positive comments and a lot of people asking what they can do to help. So um, 
Then also in the fall, we had a bicycle rodeo at the church, and so the kids were learning new riding skills. That There's Alan from um, Epic Cycles helping with the bike fitting and then the bike helmet fitting, so we had local business support in that. Then we were in the Black Mountain Christmas Parade again, so these pictures are of us lining up behind the, um, the store. Uh, it's a little hard to take pictures once you get rolling. And this year we had community support again from one of the businesses that you all heard from last year, Bello Girl Rides, so they drove their van and had music playing, and so we had a good time. And we threw our pickles again. Then in April we had the Greenway Challenge out at, um, at Pisgah Brewery, and Becky James, our director, was so organized that she was even able to compete in the run this year. So, During that time, we had our display up again, and we shared our plans with people who attended. And we had over 200 runners in that. We had a lot of local volunteers, and we raised over $3,000 for the Greenways. Then in May, we had Bike and Walk to School Day. And as always, Flat Creek Greenway was used to get to school. And we also had a coffee stand at the end of that uh, event, which is really one of the, the fun parts of it, is so that parents, once they walk their kids to school, can congregate and, and talk and kind of network and drink coffee. We also had, just to mention, I don't have a slide of it, but last Wednesday we had another bike walk to school day, so they either walk from the church or they ride down the greenway. I got up Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock, it's raining, and I'm like, well, I'll go down there and there'll be no one there. We had 84 kids participate, plus, you know, every one of those had a family member and some had younger siblings, so, I mean, it's a popular event. People are psyched about it. Now we're trying to figure out how we can get that to happen more often and more on a more regular basis. Then another fundraising event we had was Cycle to Farms. Uh, Bello Girl Rides put this on, so David, Jen and David Bilstrom direct that. Then they raised close to $3,000. And this happened on a day in July when it was pouring rain, and you can see from those pictures, even despite the fact that it poured rain all day, we had all these people come out and we still raised all this money, and we had, again, a lot of volunteers. So riders, cyclists are a hardy group. <laughs> Then, you know, you might wonder, what do we do with these funds? Some of the funds were contributed to help with the match for the hydrological study along Flat Creek and also the recreation master plan update. Um, how did we participate in town projects? We helped with the recreation master plan update. We worked on the complete streets policy committee, and you all passed that last month. And then we also worked to develop the bicycle planning grant. We worked with town staff and we obtained a $1,000 match from the Blue Ridge Bicycle Club to pay for the town's, help pay for the town's match on that grant. And we'll be working with that. So the exciting news for us, and this is thanks to town staff and the Board of Aldermen, as, is that the hydrolog, hydraulic modeling study was complete. So that's exciting because it really kind of sets the stage to look at that whole Flat Creek area and how we can get under those roads and railroad. And then another thing, and I don't know if this was mentioned, mentioned specifically, but Public Works did work on the underpass on, um, that goes uh, over the Swan and the River at Rec Park. And that had flooded regularly, especially during big events. So they cleaned out two of those um, drains or those tunnels, and they put, uh, replaced the, the boardwalk, which kept buckling. So we're really glad that happened. And then another thing that we're doing with money we raise is we're getting ready to make signs and, and post signs around town. And there's Jack Williams who, no, there's Jack right there. He does a lot of our artwork and a lot of our sign work and is very talented. So what we're trying to do is at key intersections is to put a picture of the Greenway and to let people know wh what that connects to so that um, people can navigate the Greenways that exist. And as the Greenways grow, we'll do more. But they're very stylish signs, and they should be up in the next couple months. Then we also um, have a lot of help from other people to help improve our greenways. Warden Wilson College has done weeding along the uh, Village Way Greenway. Diana McCall has helped out at the lake. Those are some of the swales she put. I think Jamie mentioned the drainage work that was done, and that's part of that. And the disc golfers also help around the rec park. Then we're also getting some public support from businesses. 
Pantera plans to work on the Village Way Greenway. They really wanted to build a greenway, but it's just not as easy as, when, as it sounds. So they agreed to help maintain the Village Way Greenway. They're going to help with uh, weeding and maintaining it, and then they're going to put signs along the, the native plants that we have planted so that people can identify them. And then Jill is going to apply for this stretch of the Greenway to become a native plant garden. We also have regional connections. We are connected with friends of Connect Buncombe. I kind of serve uh, as the Black Mountain liaison on that. So that is a friends group for the Buncombe County Greenway Plan, and we're in the process of kind of forming kind of an umbrella organization to help really support and educate the public about the whole uh, master plan, which includes Black Mountain, for all of Buncombe County so that we can just raise public awareness. We went to the Carolina Thread Trail Forum again last year. Jack Williams, Ann Lutz, and myself went, and we'll look at going again this year. And then we continue to support the work of other town commissions and groups. So we had a brick bought for us um, in our honor on the town square. We also have done work with the Health Initiative, with Parks and Rec, and um, we are working with, going to be working with Urban Forestry on their project. Upcoming events, we plan to work, do a tailgate market um, display again October 17th and to then also work at the, or have a display and some kind of fun activity at the Mini Monster Fest October 24th. And then in Christmas Parade, we will be doing that again on December 6th and we're teaming with 10,000 villages. They will participate in the parade with us and then they're going to have on December 14th, they will donate 10% of all their proceeds to the Greenway Commission, and we will have a display up there. So if you have any Christmas shopping to do, save it till that day. Goals for the coming year, to continue maintaining and improving the current Greenways. And we don't do this alone, of course. We do this totally with the town support, and we are very appreciative of town staff and the Board of Aldermen. We're just there cheerleading, really. Um, work with the town walk on the town on the Riverwalk Greenway, continue our Greenway outreach, and to continue our fundraising activities. Are there any questions? Very good work that y'all are doing. Thank you. Thanks. I have to leave. I'm going to pass the gavel over to the vice mayor, and he will preside over the rest of the meeting. Thank you, Doctor. Yes, sir. Up next, we have a uh, report from Casey Connor on Recreation Department. Mayor, board, well, leaving mayor, vice mayor, board. <laughs> Thank you all for giving us the time uh, to present this evening. Um, uh, start things off with uh, athletics. Uh, we had a swim league this year. Uh, we had 46 participants in our swim league. Uh, that was up over 20 participants this year. It was very popular. Uh, we had spring softball league. Our fall softball league is currently happening. Um, Start Smart soccer program, which is a soccer program for uh, kids age three to five. We do one of those in the spring and the fall. Um, we have 20 participants in that right now. Um, our soccer camp this summer, uh, we had 15 participants. And our tennis camp with the Black Mountain Tennis Association uh, had 18 participants this summer. Uh, under health and wellness, uh, we had a spring employee wellness campaign. Uh, we had 31 participants in it, um, and they logged over 86,048 action minutes and uh, just a little over 11 million steps. So that's a lot of people moving. Um, our walk to Walk and bike to school day uh, was just this past week. Uh, we had 125 kids and approximately 75 parents for that. Um, the uh, health initiative um, this year created a program for to bring health care providers here in town together um, to, tr to try to provide a network um, so they get to know each other and uh, see where others' strengths and weaknesses are to help out the community, um, help people identify what, uh, you know, who to go to for, for, uh, for different issues they may be having. Um, as Julie mentioned, the Cycle to Farm uh, bike ride raised to over $2,000 for Greenways. 
uh, and the NCDOT bike plan grant. Um, also, uh, the quarterly super lunches, um, we had over 32 people participate in that as well. Uh, community garden, we have 25 students in the garden club this year. Um, we have, uh, those are students from the Black Mountain Elementary. Uh, Jamie had a picture of the, uh, the fence that was around the, the, the uh, garden over there. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not, but, but uh, it's really pretty impressive what those kids have done over there. It's pretty neat. You guys should check it out. It's behind the elementary school. Um, we also had uh, five interns uh, over, the, over the course of the past six months. Um, two of them were primarily at the community garden, and then we've had several at the school gardens as well. Um, and those are uh, funded through um, the Parks and Greenways Foundation um, through donations there. So, um, we had 1,300 hours of volunteer labor. Uh, we registered over 60 people for garden plots this year. Um, and we had six plots at the Carver Center. And we had nine at Lake Tomahawk. We're hoping to, to add a few more at the Carver Center this year. And we're also hoping to add um, some plots, uh, some accessible plots um, that'll be uh, raised high enough for people to be able to access them that have mobility issues. Um, at the Senior Center, uh, Brittany has, Brittany started about, you know, the, in the past six months, it's been about six months she, since she's been there. She's done a great job over there. Um, and this is just some of the highlights here. Um, she uh, initiated a luau potluck that was well attended there at the Senior Center. Um, the hiking group, we actually have waiting lists uh, now for the, for the hiking group on Tuesdays. Um, so it's as popular as ever. Um, the nutrition site is actually up in participation. It's up from about an average of 22 to 25. So that's gotten better. And uh, we've done four van clan trips with an average of about 12 participants each for that. Uh, special events, uh, Park Rhythms, which is a town favorite, was very well attended this year. Um, the July 4th street dance that we have down on Sutton Avenue, we had over 500 participants for that. Uh, Black Mountain Summer Adventures, which is our uh, summer camp program, we had 104 participants for that. We're hoping to uh, expand that a bit uh, this coming summer. We, we sold out all, all of our spots um, probably in April um, for, for that summer camp. So we're hoping to add a few weeks to that this year so we can offer a few more spots. Um, and then also the playground uh, that we built at the Carver Community Center that you all got to see out there on that rainy evening. Um, all right, uh, this is swimming pool highlights. Um, as you can see, there's uh, I've got three years up there to kind of uh, uh, put a little bit of a, a trend there on, on things. Uh, attendance was up a little bit uh, from last year. Um, still down from 2012. Uh, the pool rentals that we had uh, were the same as last year. Um, days of operation, we actually had less days of operation this year than last year. And a couple reasons for that, um, they did have an extra week of school this year. Um, and uh, we also um, had a lot of very cool days towards the end of July and um, which really, uh, really hurt um, attendance. And so a lot of those days we, we just went ahead and shut down. Uh, our swimming lessons, uh, we're gonna look at that this year. The numbers have kind of steadily been de declining there. And so we're gonna look at, uh, at you know, kind of revamping those or, or changing up what we're offering to try to bring those numbers back up. And then the aqua exercise class, uh, which was new this year, we had 17 participants for that. And that's 17 people that paid for it. It was, that's not 17 total people all summer. That's, uh, they, they met uh, a couple times a week. And so that's, the people could kind of pick and choose which classes they came to. Uh, the aquatics financials, uh, the concession stand, um, we were down a little bit in the concession stand. Uh, that probably has to do with the uh, amount of days being open. 
Um, total expenses, the total expenses were up this year. Um, a couple of the things that, that we added there uh, were long-term fixes to, to problems. Um, we spent almost $8,000 re-plumbing the entire uh, uh, restroom facility. Um, and it's re-plumbed to, uh, to not have uh, water breaks and, and uh, freeze problems the way we have in the past. So, uh, so we're looking forward to, to that work now. We also bought uh, lap uh, lines and um, a reel and some t a timing clock and things like that for the, uh, for the swim team, uh, for the swim meets. So that's why the expenses are up there a little bit. Um, the uh, total revenue uh, was actually up slightly as well. Um, not a whole lot, but as you can see, on average, it's it's we're about average there for this year. So, um, some of the upcoming events uh, we're taking uh, signups now for indoor soccer and basketball. Um, you can sign up for those at BlackMountainRec.com. Uh, you can save five dollars by signing up online. <coughs> Um, we will be, our staff will be attending the NRPA conference, which is the National Recreation and Parks Association conference uh, this week in Charlotte. Um, we actually have uh, two of our uh, staff will be giving a presentation there as well, uh, which is pretty, uh, it's a pretty big deal. There's not very many departments our size that are doing presentations at a national conference. Um, we have the Mini Monster Fest coming up here in a couple weeks that Julie also mentioned. Uh, the Circle of Lights will be after the Christmas Parade in December. Um, the 15th Annual Valentine Run will actually be held on Valentine's Day this year, so that's kind of a, a unique thing. It's worked out, so uh, it'll be kind of neat. And also we've started renting uh, the bounce houses for parties at, at Greg Arena. So we've had several of those over there, and it's becoming more and more popular. I think the fire department had one uh, this this past weekend at their open house. So hopefully, once we get the word out there, we'll we'll start renting those uh, weekly. So, anybody have any questions? All right. Thank you all. Black Mountain needs assessment. Yeah, um, you have uh, Ananda Mitra is here tonight. Uh, if you'll recall, about six months ago. Um, we st started uh, redoing our recreation needs assessment. We do that every, about every 10 years. It uh, is just an, um, an important way for us to kind of gauge the community for uh, recreation needs. It also helps with grants and, uh, and, and opportunities as far as that goes. And so I think tonight um, Anand is going to talk to us about the, the process and some of the information that he's gathered and then where we go from here. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, what we'll do here is uh, quickly talk about the process, as you said, and share some data with you, some of the findings uh, from the first part of the process. So the process that we are using here uh, is a repetition of a process uh, that I did for the town about seven years ago uh, when MLL came into the town for the first time to do this study. I actually had the good opportunity to spend this last few days uh, in Buncombe County working and I want to recognize Fran here, the director of the county department, uh, and we'll be doing a study for them as well. So all of this data will help uh, everybody in the end, this data and the Buncombe County data. So our process is pretty straightforward. Uh, we did focus groups with different segments of the community when we were here. Uh, we developed a questionnaire. Some of you might have had a chance to look at that questionnaire. We collected data. We got about a 15% response on the mailing. The data was uh, aggregate analysis was done, which means we took the entire data and a analyzed the data. We didn't break it down by demographics yet, but that capability uh, exists, and we will do that as we prepare the final report. And then we are going to do the data interpretation and give you recommendations. I uh, just want to share with you some of the major findings from the study. Uh, for the next slide, uh, we uh, had some questions about what, uh, what people are going to, and this is what we found. And this is kind of, uh, I'm not going to read it out, as you can tell. These are the things that we've been hearing about all evening. You know, the Greenways report, the uh, talk about Tomahawk Park. Uh, these are the major things that people were visiting. Uh, we then also asked about the reasons on the next slide for uh, 
why do people not go to things? Uh, this is something that's important because it's it, it, this was a county wide, this was a community wide study, so this was not just a user study. So there were a lot of people who reported that they do not go to things, and uh, not unlike uh, many other communities I've worked in, and literally I've worked, you know, done about 150 of these studies across the U.S. Uh, the three major reasons repeated themselves over here: uh, not enough time, nothing that nothing can be done about that necessarily, uh, not interested in the programs, and lack of information are. Are, are reasons that we see in many communities, and I think there are fixes for that, and we will provide some recommendations for that. Uh, better opportunities elsewhere that could be interpreted as uh, county opportunities, maybe opportunities in neighboring cities, Asheville not being that far away. Inconvenient timing of programs, that too can be addressed uh, fairly easily, uh, and Casey and I will work on that in terms of developing some uh, time options. Good news is fees were not considered to be high, and that fell pretty low in the list of priorities. So now going on to the next slide, these are some of the strategies that one can use uh, for communication. Uh, now this, this list that you're looking at is based on the responses of the respondents. So in other words, uh, they said that direct email announcements is, pro is the best way of getting in touch with the folks and uh, department website. None of this, again, surprises us. Uh, website, Facebook, social media, um, and newspaper ads. So these are some of the things. Some of these things are being done. Some can be done in the future, but this will get the word out. We also asked a set of questions uh, that gave them statements like the ones you're seeing. and. Uh, uh, folks were asked to either strongly agree, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree with those statements. The percentages that you're seeing reported are the sum of the strongly agree and the agree, and clearly uh, this is very good news. Well-maintained park adds to the quality of life, and everything that I've been sitting here and listening to so far demonstrates that your community is very committed to that maintenance. Um, when I did the study uh, some years ago, uh, one of the focus of the study was the health of the community and the healthy living aspect of Black Mountain. That is uh, alive and well. Uh, it is still a very, very health conscious community. Uh, walkable, that becomes important. Uh, the, all of the conversations about the greenways uh, was really, really interesting to listen to because you'll see that coming back in, in the study. Walking facilities are important and uh, I that was just demonstrated in the participation that was reported in the greenways and the biking and stuff that happens in spite of weather. Uh, we also had questions about uh, moving on to the next slide uh, to uh, program opinions. You can just go through that. Uh, the first answer was kind of interesting. Uh, that That's an opinion answer. Keep that in mind that people do feel they're fairly healthy, but they also feel that there is a need for greater health-related uh, recreation. Uh, the fourth one down the line, that is new uh, in terms of uh, priorities compared to the earlier study. There is a greater, deal, a greater need for people over age 55. Demonstrates the aging of our communities uh, across the United States. Uh, collaboration with local businesses, that is also new. 62% felt that should be done. And uh, I think we're starting to see uh, some, uh, I, I saw at least in the reports this morning, this evening, there are uh, the collaborations with uh, businesses where businesses are coming out to sponsor things. And I think that's kind of what people are asking for. Um, the last item, it's kind of interesting. I remember sitting uh, in the room uh, right here in town hall in a focus group. And this issue came up many times. Should this be allowed? Well, 51% feels that it should be allowed, that alcohol sales at events. This is a decision that you all will take as a community, but this is what the data said. So moving on, uh, administration opinions. We had some items that dealt precisely with the administrative activities of the department. Now, remember, uh, these studies have some internal inconsistencies at times. So while people are saying that lack of information is a reason for non-attendance, they're also saying that I'm aware of the recreation programs and activities. So there is a little bit of uh, mismatch in that, but nevertheless, you know, I think some things can be done with the communication. Uh, the 64 percent, two-thirds, coming out and saying that it, the department is responsive to community needs is really good news. I think that's a, that's a pretty high percentage over there. And then financial options. We did ask some questions about how do you feel that uh, Activities should be financed. Uh, these are the. This is the priority that emerged. 
Uh, what is interesting to note in this, and uh, I was in uh, focus group meetings on Thursday and Friday uh, all over your county, different places, and corporate sponsorships and donations, particularly the first part, the sponsorship part, was not that popular even seven years ago over here, but that's coming up, uh, and people were talking about it uh, in the focus groups that I had last week. Uh, the fourth item, program user fees, that's also really uh, relatively good news when combined with the fact that the people do not find costs to be a barrier, so you have some latitude of uh, perhaps using some user fees to fund some things. So I think that's the very last slide. If you would go to the next one, it will probably, oh no, there we go. That's the one that shows the top needs. The way we ask the needs is basically we listed things and we asked people to respond and say how important do you think this is and this is the outcome of that prioritization. Um, walking is really important, uh, as you can tell. Sidewalks, walking trails, um, greenways comes up here, which is, a, which is good news. The overall the story that emerges really is not very different from the story that emerged the last time we did it. It is a healthy community and seeking more opportunities for healthy activities, among which things like trails where you can walk or bike are important. So that's basically the summary. I'll give you a little set of uh, some idea of where we are going with this. Uh, the next stage of this project is to complete the report with the recommendations, and I will most likely come back one more time and sit with uh, perhaps you, uh, the, the town manager and Casey's office and go over the recommendations and the short term and the long term. While I was waiting, we were waiting for this presentation to open this questionnaire up to the public and that's going to happen as soon as Casey and I talk probably later this week and this questionnaire was, uh, will be available on the web and uh, with your help and the community help it will be made public and people can continue to respond to this questionnaire for the next 12 months. So as the master planning goes on, the data would be collected. Uh, nonetheless, this is self-selected data. This is uh, not generalizable scientific data. But we'll have an opportunity to see how things are going. And uh, Casey's office will have access to that data, and they can look at it in real time. Thank you. Any questions? In your, on that last slide, the, you want to go the back very back? last one, what, uh, when you're collecting data, what was the difference in your in in the walking trails and greenways, how do people distinguish between two? Uh, difficult to tell. I think the best way of uh, answering that, we offered these two options for them to respond to, and they interpreted it however every individual did. But I believe the walking trail would have been interpreted as something beyond greenways. You know, It could be a trail that runs through a park. It could be a trail that runs right next to a road. So that's a little bit different from a greenway. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Matt, we've got our consent agenda. Yes, yeah, sir, you've got uh, the adoption of minutes from your agenda workshop, your regular session and the closed session in uh, September. You've got a budget amendment. There's three parts to this. These are insurance settlements for um, um, accident to a police car, damage to a police car, and, uh, and a settlement with Duke Power who damaged the water line. So you have a budget amendment to recognize the revenues and the expenses for those. Then you have the call for a public hearing for text amendments for abandoned junk and nuisance vehicles. If you'll recall, we uh, um, have been discussing that periodically. You all sent that back to the planning board last year, and this is, uh, this is back again um, to see how we move forward. That's the call for the public hearing for that. And that's all that you have. Do I have a, a uh, motion to approve A and C as presented? So moved. And all in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Motion approved 5 0. All right. Citizen comments. The chair recognizes individuals requesting to address the board regarding the specific new business or unfinished business items below. Comments by any one speaker shall be limited to three minutes. We don't have any new business or unfinished business tonight. Thank you. No new business, no new unfinished public hearings. I'd like to ask a question for me. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Um, 
I can't ask a question under um, new business, old business, because this is something we've discussed. Mr. Trump, we don't have any new business or old business. By the Board of Aldermen and Town Administration to present information that was requested for me to get. I have that information and I'd like to present it. Going on to public hearings. Pardon? I said we're going on to public hearings. You've got public. a public hearing for a text amendment for setbacks to the land use code. You refuse to allow me to speak when the Board of Aldermen have it's, requested information. We have not asked you for any information that I know of. Uh, well, I know one Board of Aldermen who has, Mr. Harris has. Okay, thank you. On the public hearings. I will also request to be put on the agenda for the next meeting, please. All right, we have a public hearing for tax amendments for setbacks to the land use code as recommended by the planning board. Motion to open the public hearing. So moved. If you allow uh, planning director Josh Harold to come up and give you a brief synopsis of uh, do, uh, the tax amendments. They just made the motion to open. Oh, oh yeah, that's, sorry. Thanks, Anna. <laughs> You got a call for the oh call call the vote right. for, the, for the open open vote here. Yeah, okay. okay. you, uh, you got a motion? Just say yeah. all in favor. Aye. Aye. So what you have in front of you is an amendment to our um, 4.3.3 section of our land use code, which um, kind of goes into a little more detail on setbacks, what we would allow for encroachments. Um, currently, we measure setbacks from the nearest footing of the building. I know staff had looked at that and thought it was, it was a little um, confusing, so with the help of the planning board, we had changed that to the outside facade of the structure. In section K, currently, the setback requirements may be waived up to 12 inches or one foot by the zoning administrator and the planning board has added for accessory structures would be 12 inches and then two inches, excuse me, 24 inches or two feet for principal structure. In section L, I can read all those out if you'd like me to, but they, what they do is it goes into specific detail for things such as bay windows, seals, ornamental features on, on a principal structure that would um, be allowed to encroach into the setback side or rear, typically or front. And I would add just as if, uh, and, and uh, Josh was not here at um, the agenda meeting, I know that uh, Mr. Sneed had mentioned making a provision that addresses, um, since we're now talking about encroachments into the setback or before we had not, that addresses um, walkways, sidewalks, that's one. We actually have a provision, we went back and looked at the code, for section 4.3.3, section E, uh, reads that driveways, parking areas, loading zones, sidewalks, or greenways may encroach or be included within a yard setback without affecting the setback requirement. So you have a provision in your existing land use code that kind of handles handles those already. The only thing that we don't address are fences, which we just have traditionally allowed to be on the property line. And I, um, I don't want to. You all are obviously free to to uh, amend this text amendment as as you see fit. I would probably I would probably recommend that we come back and do and, and, and amend a different part of the section so that all our all our encroachments are listed together. I think you might agree with that, Mr. Smith. Matt's right. He got a little farther reading than I was prepared for at the last meeting. So most of the exceptions I was concerned about are there. And it would be cleaner at a future meeting to just amend the one he's referencing to add fences uh, down the road so that you don't mix mix our exceptions. So so my recommendation is to ignore what I said Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> and, and consider the, the amendment as it is before you. Any discussions? One concern is, does this open it up to the discretion of the zoning administrator to make the determination? Or is this something that if, if I came to the zoning administration and said, I want to do such and such, then Alderman Stone came or as a citizen right. Stone and came out and said, I want to do such and such, would we both be given the same, or would we have to convince the zoning administrator that 
I deserve a foot and he deserves two feet. Yeah, it's, um, to be completely honest with you, K and L are, K is, you know, we have part of K today and it was, it's a little bit concerning for me, to me, uh, just to, to give that discretionary um, power to a, a staff person. Personally, we have a board of adjustment that can give, give that to folks. And I think I'm more comfortable with that, but um, the planning board was, that, that they really wanted to see it in this form and to answer your question, uh, I, I don't know. I, could, I don't know if, I, if she may, I mean, the zoning administrator, it'll be completely up to her on whether or not you're proving to her whether it's a hardship. Okay. Go ahead. I'll let okay. I'll um, in the preparation, preparation of this, how much were you conferred? How much was the town conferred with did the plant and zoning commission work with you? Did they take your input? Originally, when I started looking at this, um, I was really concerned with, with B, the very first one that talks about the footing. My concern was it probably needed to be the furthest projection of the building and not the footing of the building. Um, K, like I said, I had an issue with K just as it's written today. I'm just not very comfortable with allowing discretion with a zoning administrator. And L is something completely new that came from another location which really it gives, it allows us to be more flexible for folks, but it does make it a little more troublesome for staff. Do we have a representative from the commission here tonight? A representative from From zone? Planning zone? Well, Dan's back there. Okay. Minutes, but, but not. And they pretty much came up with their, um, information, the example they wanted to go on for this based upon what? Ale comes from Asheville, straight out of Asheville's code. And K is just what they wanted to see as far as the addition for the, um, the two foot. We currently already allow 12 inches today. Okay. Do I have any more comments? Yes, I just have a few. Uh, if, if I can, yes, sir. Don. Um, I, I wanted to, first of all, you know, thank Josh and the staff for, for bringing this report to us. Thank the planning board for taking the time to consider it. Um, you know, having sat on the planning board, uh, I, I know what they go through in making these recommendations, and they don't make them lightly. Uh, but I think that the, the main goal that we all try to strive for on, when sitting on those boards is clarity. And when I look at the ordinance, as presented tonight, this isn't very clear. And I have concerns about Section K. And I think L is, of course, trying to create the specific requirements to, to make those clarifications, but it's not done in a way that I would feel comfortable having staff interpret or, ha or just having somebody that wants to, to approach the town about this being clear on when they read this online. From that, from saying that, I think the ordinance would read better if we, if we move to remove sections K and L as presented. And then we're, we're where we were, staff still can, I think it's, it's clear from that aspect, staff can still enforce it, uh, and we can make the recommendations that Ron has suggested in the next meeting. Well, if you may, uh, if you, if you take out K and L, we, well, we can still yes, we can yeah. still we can still make that still make that change. It won't be as yeah. as pressing. So basically, what you're saying is, we would make the one we would change it from the from the measuring from the nearest footing to the to the outside of the side of the structure, yes. and the other and the other language, and you know we have existing language in K currently that says setback from be varied up to 12 inches. You're saying K and L, yes. take that out. Okay. Well, L's, L's new. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any Is any other discussion? Uh, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Mr. Stone, do we have a motion to approve ordinance uh, 
Well, Matt, Matt was checking with Ron real quick. Well, you know, my only question to Ron was because the change was in K, we already have an existing section K, and the change was to add the two feet instead of the one feet. And now you're saying we're going to take section K out. I just want to make sure that since that wasn't a rec that since that wasn't part of the, that they can, that they can remove the entire section, yeah, but they can do that because they have the power because it's part it. of the section. Yeah. What you will be doing, and the way I'm understanding it, is you're revoking the old section K. That's what they that, that allowed staff to do the 12 foot variance for that board, the board of adjustment. 12 inch, yeah. Oh, the 12 foot, yeah, the 12 inch variance. Yeah. <laughs> 12 feet, 12 feet would be plenty. We wouldn't need the board of adjustment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's what's intended. Yes. Okay. So is the motion cleared everyone? I wouldn't mind hearing it. Yeah. yeah. It, mm -hmm. I, mm, Anna, what do you what do you think the motion is? <laughs> <laughs> put you on the spot. That's right. Come on. Um, I think it's fine. <clears throat> um, okay, all minutes are moved to adopt ordinance number 0 14 13 as amended by removing sections K and L. Yeah, I would, I would say, maybe could we say section K in its entirety just because that's not, we didn't, we amended. To change that language, now we're going to take that entire section out. We're moving section K in its entirety and, and the proposed section L. Okay. We have that motion, Ryan. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? 5 0. Approved. Now we have we need a motion to adopt the statement of consistency for the text amendments. I so move. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? 5 0. All right. Now to B, public hearing for text amendments for automotive sales to Central Business District as recommended by the Planning Board. I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Approved set 5 -0. Any discussions? Would you like Josh just to briefly go over some of it? It won't take, this won't take long. Bill is with us with Black Mountain Tire, if, and he can answer questions if, if, if you have any. But the, the whole intent of this, this amendment is currently we allow automotive service in our central business district. He would like to use Black Mountain Tire in order to sell some vehicles. In order to do that, we would have to amend our um, table of uses to allow for such. So what you have in front of you is an amendment to the table of uses under conditional uses to allow automotive sales, rental, and service. And once again, you already allow automotive service as conditional uses. So if, if you were to pass this, he comes and gets a permit. It's got to go through the Board of Adjustment under a conditional use permit, and they can add. Maybe conditions, conditions on how many cars he could sell or things like that, maybe mm -hmm. buffering or things of that nature. Any questions? Any idea how many vehicles he's looking at selling at one time or having parked in the, on the property? I have on the property at one time, I'd say no more than 10. Now that's back Black Mountain Tire by the, by um, Tax Supply? No, no across the from the old Sobel house. house. The old place? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. But the process here is that you still, it still has to move through a process. And the process could change to right. define the number of automobiles. That's still to be It'll be case by case. You'll have to to, to to file with the Board of Adjustments and make their case to the Board of Adjustments. There'll be questions and 
and issues and then restrictions put conditions put on that each and every for each piece of property and that process when that takes place no neighbors are notified and have an opportunity for yeah. input etc that sort of thing fairly certain they are yes. mm -hmm. yeah. so i think that's my opinion a fair process uh, i think as a conditional use it's fine with the the restrictions and that'll be put on it i mean i i think that when you you look at this you you immediately think of uh, you know the large car dealerships that you see on Brevard Road or in South Carolina and something like that and and this is just a small I'm sure that with the conditions on it this is going to be a small use so uh, I think that this is fine and, and more than appropriate well, since it's conditional it can always be adjusted. adjusted yeah I mean not 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 gonna harm somebody that's already has some approval, but going forward, if it, there's something that we want to adjust, we always could. Absolutely. Any further discussion? Do I have a motion to close the public hearing? Removed. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Do I have a uh, motion to adopt ordinance 1440 1414? So yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved 5-0. I need a motion to adopt the statement of consistency for the text amendments. So, so moved. All in favor? Aye. 5-0. Communication from staff. Mr. Steen. Uh, as I told you at the uh, agenda meeting, the only thing I'd report is next Monday will be the oral arguments on the settings case with the, the bond company. So, not that you'll necessarily have a result that day, but at least there'll be oral arguments. I'm anticipating we will have a decision by the end of the year. Judge Hunter is on that panel and he's retiring after the session, so mm -hmm. I expect they have to come up with a decision before he goes home. Right. And I'm assuming you'll let us know just as soon as you they'll yeah. contact you first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Settlemeyer. The only thing I have, I know we've discussed uh, um, town square finances, and and we we do have a report from the um, that was released from the um, Black Mountain Park and Greenway Foundation. You should each have a copy of it in front of you. Um, that lists the money that they've raised, the money they've expended, and of course, if you'll recall. As we move forward, we have a process now that any any expenses or expenditures on that on that town square property would come through the town, and they'd be addressed either through the budget or a budget amendment. So there would be a, a tracking um, process for that as we move forward. And um, and then, like I said, you you should have a summary report that's been released from the foundation for each of you. And. Uh and Matt, the idea would be if anyone has any questions or comments, they simply go to the the uh, Parks and Greenway Foundation. Yes, that, yes, they, that's exactly right. There, the Parks and Greenway Foundation, uh, of course, it, as you all know, raised the raised the money privately for the uh, improvement and development of the property. Um, that, of course, will now run entirely through the town. Even contributions from the Greenway Foundation or the Parks and Greenway Foundation. Um, they would be invoiced and they would then reimburse us for those but uh, but if there are any questions about about the uh, the numbers from the past um, direct those towards the foundation communications from the uh, mayor and board of Alderman, please if I could could I speak just sure. a second uh, if I could address no ma'am I can't recognize you I'm not running the meeting and I just simply want to offer one one word you have an you had an opportunity the way the agenda works. You have an opportunity to speak at the beginning, and you had three minutes. That's the only time you're able to speak at the meeting. So no one's trying to be rude, but that's just how the meetings are run. I put on the agenda for the next board meeting. I have um, time to more than three minutes to uh, present my information and ask my questions. That would not be my responsibility to my. I don't have the authority to tell I was you just that. For the procedure as you were explaining it to me that I got my three minutes. Um, if I am put on the agenda, I am not under a time constraint, am I? It's at the discretion of the board for how the agenda is set, and that'll be set. We have a that'll be set for you know the end of October for the November. So you, as the board, could refuse to put me on the agenda if you so choose. 
Let's pray. Well, the agenda is set by the board for, for the issues they wish to address. Yes. Okay, I'd like to address one more item, seeing as Alderman Harris yeah. and, and also our town manager has brought up, and that is the um, financial information totals for the council uh, project. Communication from the, from the mayor and board of aldermen, please, ma'am. We need to move on and do it in a proper uh, there, This proper issue way. was brought up by the board. Why do I not have the right to address it? It was also brought up by the um, You can the address it the next board meeting and citizen comments. That won't be on... Mr. Snead, can you clarify that, please? What, what you need to understand is the meeting of this board of aldermen is probably what's called a limited public forum. It's not a public forum. A truly public forum is where you can stand in a town park or on the sidewalk and say whatever you please, whenever you please, as long as you don't violate other rules. But this board sets its agenda, and this board hears what it wants to hear. There are processes and ways to get it on. I Jumping up, that, and I'm not trying to violate but, but any yes, of the rules but, and but but you've been doing it fairly regularly for the last 30 minutes, and the board's been trying to let but you the know. The board's been bringing this information up. Why can't uh, a they have a call for public comment on it, ma'am? Please, I'd like to have a call for public comment. Uh, because it, this is information that you say goes to the Greenways um, uh, Foundation. I have, so have you, and they they won't give you that information. Can, Thank you very much. Do we have any more communication from the uh, mayor or board of aldermen? I just had a couple things, if I could, quickly. Um, one, I wanted to just give uh, a quick update from the Land of Sky uh, report. Uh, Larry and I attended the last month's meeting, and one of the things that they're working on are improving connections between uh, local, local industries. Uh, one of the exciting things that they're doing is uh, they've done an industry of the or a review of the craft brew industry in Western North Carolina. And one of the exciting things to report is that the preliminary data shows that for every craft brewery job that's created, there are five ancillary bloom jobs that go with it. And this is good news for us because we've got three so three breweries and then also the Hoffman Blueberry Farm here in Black Mountain. So, so I think we're positioned pretty well in the future with, with that going forward. Um, I wanted to thank uh, both the Greenway leadership and Maggie uh, for, for uh, navigating the, the grant that we received from the MPO. Uh, that's a testament to everyone's leadership on that, and I know it's going to be a fantastic project. Uh, since Fred's here, I wanted to say that uh, it's not always an easy relationship between, for both municipalities and, and the media. But we're, we're going to miss Jennifer Fitzgerald. We saw her, her notice in, in the paper this last month or this last week. Um, she was an asset to this community, uh, always in getting the information out, and, and helped us greatly with that. And she will be missed. And, and the last thing I wanted to say is that it, for me, uh, it's now been a little over a year uh, sitting on this board. It's been an amazing experience for me, uh, mostly because I get to work with, with a great group of people up here and a great staff here at the town. Uh, but one of the things that I, I like to do is to self-evaluate where I am and, and move forward on it. And I've learned a lot of things. There were some mistakes and some rough steps to start with. I appreciate your patience growing with me on that. I feel like, I feel like I'm better for it. I've definitely le learned from it. And that just like everyone up here, uh, you know, you'll hear some, some complaints about this being a unified board. There are six very strong and, and different opinions on this board, but what we do is that we treat each other professionally, we treat each other with respect, and we make sure that we have just one goal, and that's the betterment of Black Mountain. And it's, it's something that goes throughout the organization, it's something that Matt has helped instill, and we're a better community for it, and I'm just grateful that I get to be a part of it, so thank you all so much. Anyone else? I've only got one comment to make, and that's uh, basically on the, uh, the town square finances and things. Uh, there, this, this board has made every effort in the last few years to make sure that we, we passed a uh, motion a couple of years ago that we were not going to be using town funds 
and the towns and and we've basically done that town square steering committee has raised uh over half a million dollars of which they spent four hundred and some thousand dollars on uh, the the, the uh, town square now as we know there was a lot of op opposition to that and it cost the property owners in this town two and a half cents and dean correct me if i'm wrong but i'm thinking that's like 25 dollars for every hundred thousand dollar valuation so the average house in, in black mountains two hundred thousand is costing us uh fifty dollars a year for what we've got here at town square now to those property owners i uh those who are for and against i uh, understand their feeling on both sides to the people who donated their money a half million dollars to 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 uh develop that park uh i just hope none of us are disingenuous by criticizing what's going up going on up there if you're not a taxpayer and you're not you've not committed any resources or time or effort up there on the town square don't beat something you didn't have anything to do with and with that unless there are any other things from the uh rest of the board i have a motion to adjourn so